The vast majority in America aren't happy with their choice for a new president who can blame them either. Reminds me of an old Arabic saying from my time in the Middle East. I have two choices, both of which are bitter. That's how so much of America feels. And that's not really partisan. It just is how people feel. They feel bitter and afraid. Enter Vivek Ramaswamy, a 37-year-old entrepreneur who promises a different kind of presidential campaign. I have said I would shut down the FBI. If I'm elected the next U.S. president to pardon Donald J. Trump, we'll put a gun in every Taiwanese household, train them how to use it. I'm actually a path to legalization guy for a lot of different drugs. He will, of course, attack Democrats and does so with vigor. His messaging is actually working, along with a lot of hard work that he's put in in Iowa and New Hampshire as well as on television and social media. He's doubled his support since June 1st and is now in third place behind Trump and DeSantis. Mr. Ramaswamy is with us now. It's good to see you, sir. Welcome back to the program. We appreciate it. Um, you tweeted out the same, the same poll that we talked about at, at the top of, of the program about how young Americans are feeling. Do you agree with us that it's hard to blame them based on what they're hearing from our leaders? I think it's also hard to blame them based on the economic experience they've had in this country, being told that if you work hard, go to school, get a four year degree with college debt that you get ahead. This is personal for me. I'm a millennial. I entered the workforce in the fall of 2007 at a finance firm in New York on the eve of the 2008 financial crisis. So, Leland, I understand why young Americans are jaded and cynical. But for too long, both the left and the right, we have been running from something. I'm in this race to start leading us to something, to our vision of what it actually means to be an American. Revive that missing national identity. And by the way, growing the economy along the way is going to help as well, because young people do tend to be more proud of a country when we're making more yeah. money in that country. And that's exactly what's going to happen under eight years would, of my watch. All right. So it's kind of like what, what Bill Clinton famously said. James Carville said it's the economy, stupid. If people don't feel economically secure and like they have an economic future, it's hard to feel good about anything else. At the beginning of the program, we put up a a a graphic that had a donkey and an elephant uh, uh, fighting each other. You said sort of how they feel economically. Reasonable people can agree that the economic po policies of Donald Trump and the massive spending uh, that he did uh, probably uh, helped the economy before it hurt the economy. Uh, we can all understand what's, what's happened under President Biden economically, uh, not in terms of unemployment numbers, but in terms of how people feel. You're running as a Republican, but what does that actually mean to you? Or would you be better as neither a Republican or a Democrat? Well, look, I don't think the right divide in this country is between Republicans and Democrats. I think it's between those of us who stand for pro-American principles. One of those pro-American principles is economic growth. That's something that in many ways both parties have abandoned or at least conceded that we can't actually deliver for five plus percent GDP growth. Turns out that's what we've grown at for most of our national history. I think some of the figures that Biden and his administration are putting out are understating the economic trouble that we're actually facing. Yes, unemployment is relatively low, but the reality is the unique challenge of today is there are way more job openings than there are people here in the United mm -hmm. States right now. And so what we need to do is actually address the top obstacles that many small businesses and large businesses face too. No, no. Stop paying people more to stay at home than to go to work. Fix merit-based immigration. I think those are going to be important and under-discussed elements, Leland, in actually growing this economy, which is one of the many steps required to revive our national pride. Uh, we followed your campaign from the beginning. This is the first time I've really heard you speak, at least to us, about uh, so much uh, about economic issues, so much of what you've talked about, at least to me, and I've, I've heard you talking about being an anti-woke crusader, uh, in, in, your, in your words, and in running an anti-woke campaign. Fox Business Poll, biggest issues for GOP voters, uh, economy 41 percent overall, voters under the age of 45, 51 percent. Uh, it is about the economy, stupid. And I'm wondering if when you think you look at what we call the cross tabs uh, in these polls, meaning you dig down deep into the, the data. And I know you've done this. The social issues, the, the woke issues uh, are third or fourth on people's most important list. I'm wondering why, at least on the stump and as I, I followed your campaign, you've prioritized that so much. 
Well, I actually think, Leland, this, let's go a little deeper. These issues are deeply connected, actually. Okay. I think that our loss of self-confidence manifests itself in terms of these cultural dogmas like wokeism and climatism and gender ideology. But that loss of self-confidence is also what acts as an impediment to economic growth. People don't feel confident to take risks to start a new business or grow that business when they're lacking that self-confidence. And so the media has actually characterized my campaign as an anti-woke campaign. I never have, even since day one. Fair I enough. said this was a campaign about reviving our missing national identity. And part right. of that identity is based on the unapologetic pursuit of excellence in education, in our culture, and yes, in our economy too. But you are also right about one thing, is that we are moving into a second phase of this campaign. The first phase was about introducing myself to the people of this country and laying out my vision. Now we're getting to the nuts and bolts of how we're actually going to accomplish it. Reviving the economy is one element of okay. that. I, I, now as we're on our way to the top, I'm going to go into those details. You know, it's interesting. You, you're, you're talking about as you as you surge in the polls, all of a sudden people are taking you seriously. When I tweeted out that you were coming on the program t tonight, some very powerful folks backed by a whole lot of money sent me some opposition research on you. Uh, that had never happened before. Uh, so it, t it tells you that, that there's people out there who are who, who are now all of a sudden paying attention and they're listening. One of the things that they listened to uh, was an interview in which you talked about pardons across the board, not just to Republicans and Donald Trump, but but to Democrats uh, as well as, as a way to bring America together. Take a listen. How do you feel about mass pardons? I'm talking about Hillary Clinton's emails, Joe Biden's son, Donald Trump. Just let the past go. Move. For that is an idea that I am very open to after we've gotten to the truth of the matter of all of the ways in which the government has actually lied to us. So you promised already to pardon Donald Trump. Does that extend just to the charges that have been leveled so far? Does that extend to additional charges? And I'm wondering why you feel like you need to get to the to the bot to anything for Donald Trump. Well, look, I want to move this nation forward. We are deeply divided. Yes, there have been nations that have been even more divided than we are. Take South Africa, how Nelson Mandela led that nation forward. It required some element of forgiveness and moving forward. I think that it's a national disaster to see a president now under indictment while he's running when the party in power is using police force to arrest its political opponents. I read the first two indictments. I'm guided by the facts and the law. It is clear to me those were politically motivated persecutions and prosecutions. That's why on those first two, okay, I so, said so I would you're, pardon you're, President you're, Trump. Your pro promise extends just to those first two so far. Last, and I just want to nail you down on this uh, quickly. You, you haven't decided whether or not you would pardon Joe Biden uh, of anything that he was ever charged with or you know, Hunter, uh, Hunter Biden and expunge uh, his plea deal or any of those kinds of things. I have not decided that yet, but what I have decided is that my top priority is going to be to move this nation forward, to revive the principles of the American Revolution that set this country into motion, and to move beyond our diversity and our differences, which I think we celebrate too much. I think our true strength is what unites us across that diversity. And so whatever decisions we will make, it is in service of moving forward and reviving those shared ideals mm -hmm. that define what it means to be an American. That's a commitment I can definitely give you will guide all of my decisions. All right. We, we appreciate you being here. Thanks so much. Uh, congratulations on the uh, success. Uh, we'll be following you. Thank you. All right. I appreciate see, it. You on, see you on the trail. Credit where credit is.